What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to be doing a scene walkthrough of our recently uploaded Meteor visual effect shot created inside of Blender. As usual, this following video is not really a tutorial, but rather just a breakdown going through some of the basic concepts on how we put this shot together inside of Blender. We will, however, be making some detailed tutorials on some of these concepts as well. So stay tuned for those. If you haven't noticed, we've been gone for about a month. We've been working on some other projects, but finally we are back to making lots of visual effects content for you every week. So subscribe if you're interested in more content like this and let's get started inside of Blender. So this is our meteor scene here and I'm going to go through the concepts I used in this project kind of uh, layer by layer with our various view layers here. So I've separated all of the different passes into their own separate view layers. So that's how I'll cover this uh, scene walk through here. So the first thing we did when creating this meteor shot was create the kind of general environment for the simulation to be within. So essentially the background and this process was fairly simple. All we did was utilize some camera projection of an image that we grabbed from unsplash.com. So that's what these two planes here are. And you can see our camera here down at the bottom of our scene. And if you see, I'll click on this. And if we go to our material tab here, you can see that it's an emission material with this uh, unsplashed texture, this background photo by Samuel Ferreira. And I'll go ahead and show you that photo real quick as well under UV editing. So as you can see here, this is that actual photo. Um, and I've just kind of mirrored it a bunch of times so that the edges of it wouldn't be quite as uh, obvious in the scene. Of course, depending on how zoomed in your camera is, you may need to clean up the shot of it better. But since our camera was kind of zoomed in, uh, I could get away with this kind of just mirroring effect. You can see that essentially the photo that we pulled off the internet was just like a box like this. And then we just duplicated it a bunch of times and projected that onto geometry from the camera. Camera. And I have a video on camera projection. Uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below if you don't know what that is. But essentially what you're doing is you're just taking this image, you're projecting it onto 3D geometry so that the perspective matches a moving camera a little bit better. And it's a really good practice to use if you're just trying to create distant backgrounds or just quickly kind of use an image without actually having to create the material or relight your CG environment because you know, you're know you just using an image and using the emission from it. So you're not actually creating a material that's being lit within the uh, CG environment. But uh, anyways, we used this image here and projected it onto both this ground plane as well as this background. So as you can see, if I go to our camera view, it's zoomed in enough so that you know you don't really see the edges here. So this is essentially our projection here. And you can see that the projection doesn't really work once you start using a different angle from the way the photo was taken. But as long as you're projecting from the camera and your camera doesn't move too much and create too much parallax, you can create some really nice backgrounds with this effect. But uh, anyways, after creating this camera projection, we took a few more steps to kind of build the environment around our meteor. So as you can see here, I've uh, taken some photos uh, of some puddles and I made them really reflective and just kind of put them on the ground so that as our camera followed the meteor down into the ground, it just creates a little bit of specularity and you know kind of enhances the environment a bit and gives it a little bit more of a 3D look because as you can see here some of the actual camera projection is pretty low resolution so something I did to add a little bit of detail was just add these puddles create a little bit of specularity and uh, you know when the explosion actually goes off it has a little bit more environmental interaction because it's creating the reflection on these surfaces here so I took those images myself imported them into Photoshop gave them an alpha channel and then just kind of place them in different areas here. So super simple concept, just wanted to add a little bit of specularity to the ground here. There's a little bit of cleanup that I could do. However, in the compositing process, I added so much distortion and grunge that it really didn't matter quite as much as you see here. But uh, anyways, that was our next step in creating this shot. After creating both our background projection and adding these little specular reflections with these puddles, I then wanted to add a little bit of atmosphere to the environment. So what I did to do that, as you can see here, is I added some atmospheres on their own separate view layer. So what I've done, I'll just go ahead and isolate these by themselves. Just turn off everything here real quick. So you can see that we have a whole bunch of different uh, planes here. And if I go to rendered view, you'll see that there are just some basic stock footage elements that I've put in various places in Z space. So this is a nice little trick you can use to add some haze to your environment 
and kind of make your environment seem a little bit more photorealistic because these are actually real video stock elements taken of these atmospheres. So just some uh, video files and I actually have a tutorial on how you can use these stock elements as well. So I'll put a link to that in the description as well. It's a fairly self-explanatory process, essentially just imported these as images on planes and uh, you know adjusted the timeline where they started depending on where you wanted the smoke to be at any given time. So I adjusted the timeline a bit of these images and kind of placed them in the environment. And you can see that there are some seams here that you would see when these are rendered out. However, I did add a lot of blur on this specific view layer in the compositing process. So uh, that kind of solved that issue and helped blend it all into the environment and give it a little bit more of a subtle atmospheric feel. So that was our final step in creating the actual environment. Pretty simple setup, essentially just camera projection, a little bit of specularity with those puddles, and then finally added these atmospheres for a little bit more of a photorealistic result. All right, so after creating that environment, the next thing we did was of course animate our camera. It's a pretty simple animation. I just did a quick little tilt down from the sky to the ground, and then I added a noise modifier to the camera, as you can see in our graph editor to give a little bit of a handheld feel. And again, I covered that in the last video as well. If you wanna know how to make that handheld movement, uh, put a link to that in the description as well. But anyways, created a quick little tilt down here, and then I animated the meteors to the movement of our camera. But anyways, after creating and animating the camera, the next step was to, of course, add the meteors to our shot and make them a flow object so that we could turn them into a smoke simulation. So I'll go ahead and go to that meteors smoke view layer here. And essentially the concept behind creating these meteors, and I'll do an in-depth tutorial on this process in the next video, but essentially the process is you just make a uh, flow object about the size of the meteor that you want and then you make that flow object emit fire. And then essentially you animate it where you want it, add a domain cube, and then bake out the simulation with various resolution divisions. And then you kind of have to experiment with the exact settings of the smoke domain cube, which uh, contains the simulation. We're using Mantaflow in this specific tutorial, and I've also used to create these flow objects our chaos add-on, I use the smoke plume operator. Um, and essentially I just added a smoke plume which generates the smoke domain as well as a pulsing smoke flow object which makes the fuel kind of pulse over time and gives it a little bit more organic result. So I've added a few different smoke plumes here which are the meteors themselves here. So as you can see, I've just duplicated them. But anyways, after creating those fire and smoke flow objects for the actual meteors, I added a particle system to each meteor to emit these sparks over a short duration. So as you can see here, if I go to the particle system settings, I'm emitting 7,000 particles from frame one to ending on frame 200, and then giving them a lifetime of six. So they die off fairly quickly. As you can see here, these sparks are lasting for only six seconds before dying off, which is just going to give us the effect as if some burning bits are coming off of the meteor. And of course, I've also exported those meteor sparks on their own separate view layer so that we could composite them over top of our meteors more effectively. After adding the sparks particle system to the meteors themselves, of course, I baked out the smoke meteor domain. So as you can see here, I'll go ahead and turn on the smoke meteor domain here. It's a pretty, you know, large scale simulation. Of course, you could add more detail depending on how close your camera is, but um, I thought it was pretty decent once, uh, you know, we added some of the compositing grunge and glare over it. Of course, you can see that there could definitely be some more resolution if you're going for a close up shot or if you just want a little bit more detail. But um, yeah, this was our smoke domain here. I've baked it out at 340 resolution divisions, which is pretty high. However, you know, the domain itself was pretty large as well, which of course affects the size of the voxels relative to the scene here. So 340 resolution divisions, and then I've used uh, an up res factor of one on the noise. Pretty simple setup. I use the chaos fire shader to shade the fire to get a pretty nice looking result right off the bat. And for the time I spent on the project, I was pretty happy with the result. Of course, I've added our meteor smoke on its own separate view layer. So everything else in the scene is set as indirect only so that as you can see here, if I go to render view really quick, only the meteors and the smoke domain itself are being shown in this view layer so that, you know, again, we can composite all of these different view layers on top of each other much more effectively. But uh, yeah, after creating our meteor smoke simulation, I then needed to create the actual explosion when they hit the ground. So uh, that was our next step. And again, a new view layer was used for that. So as you can see here, we have an explosion view layer and I've added another explosion smoke domain here. And again, we've used the uh, chaos add-on here. We've used the dynamic smoke fire option with several 360 ground bursts to create the fuel fields for that explosion. So you can see here that as our meteors hit the ground, 
these 360 ground burst operators are creating that fuel field which drives our fire and smoke simulation once we bake it out. So uh, let's see here, I'll go ahead and turn our smoke domain on. And you can see here the result of those fuel fields. I baked this out at 160 resolution division, so not too much on the initial resolution. However, I did upres the simulation by a factor of three here, which is not a lot. However, once the explosion was composited on top of everything and you know we added some glow and glare to it, I thought it looked all right, so I stuck with it. I did think about simulating some explosion elements separately here for a little bit more control. If I do this in the future and I have a little bit more powerful machine, what I might do is first simulate the main part of the explosion that kind of goes up here. And then I would probably add a, another smoke domain for just the dust cloud here on the base, just because that smoke tends to be a little bit more pyroclastic and more of like a dust cloud. So I feel like the settings for this part of the simulation could have been a little bit different to give it a little bit more realism. Um, but my my computer was maxed out at this point so I decided to go with this. Another thing that might be cool to add would be some kind of burning tracers, just singular pieces of debris flying out, maybe using the burning debris option here. But uh, yeah, this was our simulation and here it is in rendered view. Um, you can see that there's some detail in the smoke and fire and again once composited with the glow and glare I thought it looked pretty decent. So anyways after creating the actual explosion the next step was to render out all of these separate view layers in order to composite them together effectively with a lot of control. So what I did to composite everything together most effectively in the output properties of our project I used a multi-layer OpenEXR sequence which is going to export one image sequence with all of our different view layer data and all of the passes selected for each view layer included. So this is, in my opinion, far superior to PNZ sequences when you're doing a little bit more complex shots and even for some basic ones as well because you can just export one file and it has all of your different view layers and all of the passes for each view layer. So I've exported everything as a multi-layer OpenEXR and then I got into the compositing process. All right guys, so inside of Blender, this is our compositing node tree here. And if you're new to node compositing, it looks a little bit complex. However, conceptually, it is pretty simple here. So I'll just kind of go through how I composited all the different view layers on top of each other. So as you can see here, starting off, with our initial background plate here. And this was what I was talking about with the multi-layer OpenEXR sequences. With your same exported sequence, you can choose any of your view layers. And then for each view layer, you can choose which pass you want to composite with. So as you can see here, this is just our background plate projection. I'll go ahead and add an output viewer node so we can see this by itself. I've just run it through an RGB curves node to brighten up the general uh, brightness a bit, but you can see that this is just our background plate, and you can even see that some of the seams here aren't working out perfectly. However, again, once we composite everything together, it ended up blending together all right. So this kind of shows the power of compositing even when things aren't perfect in your initial export. So this is the background plate here. The next thing that we added on top of our background plate is our meteor smoke. So as you can see here, I'll go ahead and and, uh, connect this alpha over node to our viewer so you can see that we're taking our background plate and then using the alpha over node and overlaying our meteor on top of our background layer and in addition to just overlaying it I've added some basic glare to our meteors with this glare node right here just to kind of blend it into the shot a bit better and then of course after overlaying our meteor smoke we've added our meteor sparks so as you can see here Again, if we take our viewer node, connect it at this portion of our node tree, you can see that we have some of our meteor sparks here. I've also added some glare to the sparks as well, and in addition to some blur here to kind of blend it into the environment. But uh, I'll go ahead and show a little bit earlier in the shot as well for this, so we can kind of see when the meteors haven't hit the ground yet, what the sparks look like. So here it is, a little bit earlier in the scene where the sparks are just kind of burning off of our main meteor simulation. So not perfect, however, you know, adds a nice touch to the simulation. Go back to frame 142 here. The next thing that I added on top of the sparks is our actual explosion. So you can see here, I've just used the emission pass of the explosion in addition to the combined explosion pass to add some actual glare on top of the explosion before actually overlaying it on top of our shot here. So go ahead again, add our viewer node here and see what our output looks like at this point in our timeline. So you can see there's a little bit of glare and again, 
the resolution of the explosion is not 100%. However, you can see that once we add all these different compositing layers on top of it, you can get a fairly interesting looking result. And of course, if you want that extra resolution, you can just up res it a little bit more in your simulation process. That just depends on the specs of your machine and how much it can handle. But anyways, after adding our explosion here, then I added our atmosphere overlay. Those uh, stock elements that we added in our scene on their own separate view layer. You can see here, we've just overlaid those atmosphere elements after blurring them pretty significantly here to kind of hide the scenes. So you can see that I blurred them on the X axis by 20 pixels and on the Y axis by 40. And uh, you know, it just adds a nice layer of depth in our scene by uh, just overlaying that on top of our explosion element. And then finally, I wanted to add a little bit more mist to our shot. So what I did is I overlaid a mist pass of our environment environment on top of everything here. So I have some videos covering mist paths as well. However, this is kind of what we're overlaying on top of our footage to kind of lift the shadows in the deep background while leaving everything in the foreground alone, which gives it that perception of depth. And you can see that the sampling, the samples here are creating a little bit of noise. However, what I've done is just blurred a little bit and that resolves the issue fairly quickly. So as you can see here, just a little blur kind of blends it in together fairly nicely. And then I've also color corrected that mist as well to give it a little bit of a cooler feel. So anyways, after adding that mist on top of our explosion, this is what we get, which again is providing a little bit more depth. And then finally, what we have in this area right here is that lens grunge setup that we overlaid on top of our footage. So as you can see here, if I just connect our viewer node at the end of all of this, you'll see that we have this kind of grunge overlaid on top of our footage. And I cover this in another video as well. I'll put a link to that in the description. But essentially what we're doing here is we're taking that final output from this alpha over node and we're using the brightness values of this output so far in order to drive where the lens grunge occurs. So essentially it's a little bit more of a photorealistic way to add some grunge over top of your final composite without just kind of slapping on some grunge with no really procedural elements. So we're using the bright spots of the image, adding a whole bunch of glare and blur to them, and then using that, as you can see, if I go right here, we're using all of this data, essentially the bright spots of our image, to drive this lens grunge element here. So as you can see, if I just connect it to the viewer, we're using that brightness values to drive this uh, overlaid grunge element. And then we've overlaid that on top of our final shot and you'll get something like this. Finally, after adding that lens grunge effect, I wanted to give a little bit of distortion to the shot, give it a little bit of a stylistic look. So what I've done here, I just increased the contrast with an RGB curves, added a little bit of color correction, some glare, and then finally some lens distortion to uh, create that warping effect. So as you can see here, the final result after the lens grunge and we add this color correction and lens distortion looks like this. And there you have it. That is the final composite for this meteor explosion shot. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Again, I'm going to make a tutorial on the meteor effect by itself. So stay tuned for that video if you're interested. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to see next on the channel and I'll see you in the next video.